My name is Will. And I'm Karen. And unlike Mulder and Scully, we both want to believe. So we've embarked on a journey of discovery. We've talked to people deeply entrenched in the spiritual and metaphysical world. We've thrown ourselves into weird and wonderful experiences. I even joined a coven of witches. And, wait, you joined a coven? Yep, all in the interest of finding something. Anything. That will prove that there's something beyond this physical. Three-dimensional world we all live in. This is The, the Skeptic, Skeptic Metaphysicians. Metaphysicians. Welcome to the Skeptic Metaphysicians. Unfortunately, it is just me today. I am all on my own. However, I am very well accompanied by Jules Arnez. If you have been paying attention to the uh, postings we've been putting out there, the, the messages we've sent out, we've been very excited to talk to Jules because she is uh, talking to us about becoming bioquantum. And if you know me at all, you know that quantum, that term quantum really kind of energizes me because you know who I am. Quantum physics has always been one of my, uh, my pet interests. So when someone says to me that we actually have a chance of becoming bioquantum, that opens up all kinds of questions. And who better to answer those questions but my guest today, Jules Arnez. Jules, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. So that we can make sure that everyone uh, is on the same page, let's just start with the basics, right? And I know this stuff uses scalar technology and things like that, but before we even get into all that stuff, can you define can you define bioquantum for us? Of course. Well, you know, when we really break it down, it's quantum biology. We've just made it kind of a ring to that we can use um for our business and for how we speak to things and it does it gets people's attention and we are working on a quantum level through biology and and you know my passion is holding consciousness more in the quantum level of our bodies and you can actually get a degree in quantum biology and they're showing things like heart coherence and how our cells are have a very similar entanglement as that they kind of study in the quantum field that our body is actually has a lot of those same things that we can use to elevate the experience of our body and so my passion is activating those higher frequencies and then connecting consciousness to it so that we can have a more multi-dimensional experience of the body do you realize you just said a mouthful? <laughs> uh, and, and every almost every word that you said, it just it just energizes me even more. So, bioquantum uh, is using quantum biology to become more um, in tune with your consciousness, with to elevate your consciousness. That's kind of what I got from that. Is that right? Yes. Well, I would say what we do are doing is that's a little bit different is that we're working with the physical body to raise the frequency of our physical body. And because there is, I mean, our bodies are already multidimensional, but we mm -hmm. very much hold our consciousness in the awareness of, I feel this or my body's this. And, but there's this other realm, if you will, and many different dimensions of our body. And those dimensions are just as real as what we identify in as our body. And so when we raise the frequency of our physical body, which most people are resonating right around 7.8 hertz, we can raise the frequency of our body. And in that, we start to have the experience of our body beyond what we're experiencing now. I say that our, we're in a distorted operating system, the way our body is operating now, because we are observing through a programmed experience, and most of that is a primal experience of our body, but we're so much more than what we're experiencing. Mm. So does that come into terms, like people talk about the auras and energy field and things like that. Is that a part of what you're talking about here? You know, that's something that we can measure and that it is showing that, yes, in, in a sense that those are different aspects of our being. But really what I like to, to see it as another way of seeing it too would be that we have 12 strands of DNA and science is really only looking at two of them. That is 
what we can study and read the epigenetics of and studying cell mutation, all the different things that we can look at as far as how we're going to age and if we're going to get diseases. And all of that is something that we can measure through a microscope and through blood tests. But then we have these other 10 strands of DNA that they're not really sure what they're doing. And for me, the more, and that's a big part of what I do, is I sit in frequency patterns with my ability to read energy and see kind of what is it doing. And that has been a passion of mine for quite a long time. And what I'm finding is those other 10 strands are holding the more multidimensional experience of our body. And if we have only experiencing two of 12 right now, you can only imagine what we'll move into when we start to move our consciousness into those other 10 strands. I, I kind of think like that we've got the scientists have their hands full right now with two. Uh, so but, but then it comes along someone like you and we've talked to someone who, do, who does uh, DNA activation before as well. So we are aware of the other strands of DNAs, but. Um, if there's, if there's more than the two that we are looking into now, uh, you'd think maybe they would divide and conquer, right? There's more than 12 scientists out there. Why do they not just, well, let's check out what these other 10 dudes are doing. <laughs> Why do you think that is? Uh, because it's harder to measure is one. And I do know that uh, they, they are doing something like I, I'm, and I'm not a scientist and I'm just kind of pulling this out of a filing cabinet right now, but they are producing specific proteins, I believe, those other 10. So I feel like it's enough to suffice the interest that they're kind of considering, maybe that's not the right word. But, yeah, I, but yeah, that's a good question. I'm not really sure how to answer that. I think it's it's, it's, it's not interesting enough, right? It's the, right. <laughs> But, but I think you might have hit it. Like it's it's more difficult to measure. And scientists, if you can't measure, it doesn't exist, right? That's the mentality. So I'm wondering if that has something to do with it. Maybe they feel it's a junk. They call it junk DNA, right? The the stuff that's not that they don't feel has anything to do with what we're what we are, who we are. And yet we all know that the human body is a perfection in incarnate. How could it possibly be junk anything, right? There's got to be. For a long time, they thought your tonsils were superfluous. They took them out left or right. And now they find out they actually help you fight off infection. So it's just a matter of eventually we'll get to the point of people understanding maybe not so much junk, but rather something else. And I look forward to that. But thanks for going down that little digression with me. Let's go back to bioquantum now, becoming bioquantum. Okay, so now we understand that we have to enhance our frequencies in order to become uh, more in touch and more in tune with our consciousness, raise our vibrations and all that kind of stuff, raise our consciousness. That's great. Let's say that we buy into that and we are saying, yeah, it makes perfect sense. Uh, it, we all know about frequencies. We are all frequencies and a shift in frequency will, of course, always result in some sort of shift. And hopefully it's a shift for the better. Although not always the case as, as history has shown, but okay, we know we've got to do this thing. So then how does someone go about tapping into their bio quantum energy in order to help themselves raise their consciousness? Well, that's always been my passion, right? Is finding, uh, first of all, is looking at how the body is operating now in, in this more distorted operating system. And then what it would take to move it into a higher operating system or what I would call the divine operating system. And a big part is how our cells are operating. And a lot of Bruce Lipton's work has shown that the cells are observing the environment and our environment is held in a frequency pattern that matches our, our thoughts and how we feed our body and, and that we can actually change the way we think to turn off epigenetic codes or the way we think can actually turn them on. And so the more I sat in that, the more I recognized that that is not the way that we're supposed to be operating. We're not supposed to be observing in order to be cut it to be something. We're supposed to be in an expression of a perfect energy. So if you think about observing is what creates 
form. It's mm-hmm. when we observe something, it creates form. And that's why we are keep looping in this distorted operating system that we're experiencing because we are observing what's there. But when we move into the higher operating system, we can we actually move into the DNA where the DNA starts to release a specific frequency. And it is a very specific frequency that's transcribed there. And it's 963 hertz, which is measured as source intelligence. It's also measured as the um, chemical of DMT, which a lot of people that have kind of searched the psychedelics have, you know, are familiar with what that it is. And when we start to release that frequency in the DNA, the cell recognizes, oh, this is familiar. I know this. And we'll start to actually identify in the frequency of its innate being, which makes sense. We're all the innate being of source. And so it moves from observation to expression. And when that happens, it's no longer observing its environment. It's just expressing a specific frequency. And that's when this higher operating system starts to turn on. And then us as conscious beings, we have consciousness that is a tool that we can use to become the intelligence of our innate being. Well, what is that? Divine. But but then we... uh... We go back to observing, right? We observe ourselves in that frequency and therefore we fall back down. No, see, that's what's so exciting is that right now, a lot of us think that consciousness is who we are. And and that Mm. is, it is true, but it's the observation of who we are. But when we start to use consciousness as a tool, so not a tool of observation, but a tool of attuning. So when we turn on this frequency of source in our body, we can use our consciousness just like you would fine tune a a piano. So you press on the 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 key and then you have a, a tuning fork or however you're tuning the piano and you match those two frequencies. Well, we have the ability to do that with our consciousness. When we turn on the frequency of source in our DNA, our job as conscious beings is Instead of observing the frequency, we match it. We attune to that frequency. And when we do that, we stop putting our programmed thoughts on it's this, it's this, it's saying this, it's we're naming all the time, right? And instead, we're just holding our consciousness to match a frequency. And when that happens, we begin to think in the frequency of source, we begin to see through the frequency of source. And it's a practice, of course, it's going to happen overnight, but Mm. it is the way once we hit consciousness hits the frequency and we become that frequency, we're not conscious anymore. We don't need it. So then we're not conscious anymore. The obvious question is, what are we? I know the the, the, the kind of source I understand, but intelligence, because if you think about it, if you held the intelligence of source, there would be no need to be to be conscious of that intelligence. You just are the intelligence. Uh, yes, I I can I buy I see that I hear that I understand that uh, here, <laughs> um, and here mostly. But um, it's hard for me to wrap my head around being conscious and yet not conscious. Yeah. <laughs> it's like what you just said is that is why we continue to loo it, mm. because it's hard to let go of consciousness right because there is a level of ego that's connected to the consciousness because the ego needs to identify and identity is the biggest reason that we have trouble shifting and changing and uh, so if we and to think oh my gosh i am the intelligence of source and not just in my mind not just in my consciousness but in my body that my body is running the higher operating system where this intelligence is stored and that's why i like to focus so much on the body first raise the frequency of the body turn on this higher operating system and then get consciousness somewhere to go that can have an experience. And once it has the experience, it's easier to surrender to the intelligence. Well, opens up so many other avenues to talk that I didn't even realize we're heading down. Okay. Anyway. So, uh, 
the the loop that we're in that you re referenced. I mean, you can call it life, right? It is this, um, let me put it this way. When someone thinks about leaving their ego, right? No longer associated with their ego, no longer associating with their, or being conscious. We think, I mean, we, that's, that's death, right? So are you saying that we can actually achieve life without having, uh, how could I, uh, oh, blah, blah. <laughs> do, do we have to die in order to, to achieve this type of higher consciousness? I, I, I'm going to tell you a story. I just feel like it's, I can't explain this without really explaining this part of it. So yes, is the answer. And oh, that was not what I expected you to say. <laughs> but it's also no, right? So just, so this was back a couple of years ago, a good friend of mine, um, of our family, so he's 22 and he died on his 22nd birthday. Mm. And I was sitting in my kitchen and he came to me, yes, came to me after he died. And he said, get a pen and a paper. And the first thing he said is that it's not supposed to be this way. We're not supposed to die in order to become one with source. And he showed me, he gave me a whole cell equation of what happens when our cells start to move into this higher operating system and what happens to the body. But what he showed was that when DMT is released when we're born and when we die, and that frequency is transcribed in our DNA. And right now, because consciousness is observing the body in this distorted operating system, we go through cell mutation and we die. But when that frequency is released when we're born, downloaded into our, our DNA, and then our consciousness is separate from it. But he, what he was showing is what I was saying before. Consciousness isn't who we are. We're right. the frequency that's transcribed. This is just a tool. And then what happens when we die? That frequency is released again. It leaves the body. And then so does consciousness. And right now, he was showing that our consciousness is actually connected to the biophotons and the electrons of our body. And that all leaves and reconnects into that frequency. And so that's why he was showing when we can start to turn on this higher operating system and the intelligence starts to run and our consciousness organically with practice moves into this higher operating system and we become the intelligence, we don't die. We become one. That's how we ascend the body. And there is actual cell ascension stages that we will go through and experience consciously. Yeah. So can we go back and forth between the, the intelligence and consciousness? Or once we attune ourselves to the bio quantum field, that's it? And that, that's the practice, right? Well, I guess when I get there, I'll let you know. <laughs> that was my next question. Uh, have you experienced this type of uh, intelligence? I existence. definitely have. Uh, I, and that's, it is becoming an obsession of mine, just being able mm. to see what we're capable of. The, and the, we can start to have fun with it, right? Because when we start to turn on the higher operating system, we get to know how to use it. And we can start to do things that are fun. Where just, I like to go to that, the movie, The Matrix, when they're on the rooftop and she calls in and she's like, okay, I need to learn how to, what is Fly it? helicopter. My like helicopter. Right. And it's like, he's like, and we can do, that's what we can, we have the ability to do is, oh, I'm going to go play golf, but I'm not sure how. Okay. Turn it on. You put it in, but the mastery part is being able to hold consciousness in the operating system and not the mind. Right. Because when you let the operating system take over, you can do things that you didn't think were possible. Okay. So oh, you are saying, okay. This is all theoretical, right? I mean, it's not. <laughs> I, I or, not anymore. I have enough people that are experiencing things that are you would say are impossible just by doing this. Okay, sign me up. All right, <laughs> now now that we know how to do that, I I definitely want to learn how to fly a helicopter. So, I'm on board. 
Now, the biggest question mark is, of course, how does someone do this? And before we get you to answer that question, we're going to take a quick break because this sounds like a perfect place to keep people hanging. So when we come back right after these break, right after this break, uh, Jules is going to talk to us about how to tap into this intelligence, uh, how to become this intelligence, really how to, how to lose our consciousness and instead become much bigger and broader and better than what we are so that we can tap into the intelligent field that we are all a part of. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey there, it's Will. A lot of people have noticed my little Q-Link pendant that I'm wearing right now, and they're asking me what this is. Well, uh, the Q-Link pendant is a pendant that is helping me to feel more balanced, more focused. It has cleared my brain fog. I can uh, concentrate more at work. It's really incredible. But what is it exactly? That's what people are asking me. Well, you know how uh, it's been proven that uh, everything has a natural frequency that are determined by our physical structure. It's also been proven that when something's exposed to external frequencies that match its unique resonance frequency, well, then that object literally becomes stronger, more stable, and its energies are more coherent. Now, this natural resonant effect operates in us, too. We sense it. We know it. We certainly experience its energies when we feel relaxed and focused and when we're surrounded by a close friend or loved ones. Now, grounded in these scientific discoveries and reflecting human experiences, at the very heart of all Q-Link products is the proprietary crystalline core, which they call sympathetic resonance technology, or SRT. Now, it's this SRT core that reinforces the body's resonance, returning it to a clear and more balanced natural state. I can tell you, I've been wearing it for about a week now, and it has really, literally changed the way I do things. I don't think I'm ever going to go anywhere without this anymore because it took a minute, it took a while, and do say the longer you wear it, the more the effects you will feel. And at first, I wasn't sure I wasn't feeling anything. But now it's been over a week, and I'm definitely feeling myself more focused. Like I said, I don't have brain fog anymore like I used to, and I can concentrate way better. And you know what? I used to have to, first thing in the morning, get my cup of coffee so I could function. I still have my cup of coffee in the morning, but I don't feel like I actually have to have it to function anymore. And that's pretty cool. If you're curious about Q-Link and its many products, I would urge you to go into the show notes and check our link in the notes. And hey, if you have any questions, just reach out. Hey, welcome back to the Skeptic Metaphysicians. We're talking to Jules Arnez, who is quite literally blowing my mind. I say that sometimes, but, but she is quite literally blowing my mind. Um, she, you're using great scientific terms, which is, which is what makes this conversation so fun for me, so cool for me, because we're talking kind of the same languages, but, but I will say that you were probably leagues beyond where I've thought of before. Um, and that's a wonderful thing because it brings me to it. it you know, that's the whole purpose of the conversation is to expand that, that thought process. So as a pragmatist, and I say it all the time, it's, it, it takes me a bit to really find a way to wrap my head around things. You have gotten me there. I, I understand. I don't know if I truly know that I could ever get there, but if someone can get there, I can see how it might be exactly what you're talking about. So it sounds pretty darn cool. Now, there are some of us who are a lot thicker than others mm -hmm. and have a harder time of finding a way to connect themselves with these frequencies and things like that. So enter Jules, who is going to show us exactly how to tap into our quantum biofield. Yes. I have some really easy ways that we can have an experience, and that's. I'm so how glad I you said you, it's really so glad you said easy. That's great. That's perfect. <laughs> right up my alley. Okay, I got my notepad and I'm ready to go. I'm gonna have you put that down. Because <laughs> this is the way this we have to remember the intellect is not going to take us there. It's learning through experience it's having the experience 
and then being able to self-actualize in that experience and then learning what happened to get there. It's opposite of how we've been taught to learn something, right? It's because when you have an experience, your cells are activating that frequency. It's uploading that experience into your quantum body or your divine operating system. And then you attune your consciousness there for a long enough period of time that you self-actualize in it. And then you can go back and know, learn what happened and how you did it. And it's going to make a lot more sense than trying to act really learn something that's so abstract that the mind can't understand but once you have the experience it's easy right okay you, so you what bring up can... a good a good question then if, if, if so will i if let's say i'm able to do it uh and i get into this intelligence will i i mean again wrapping my head around it very difficult like will i be conscious of my experience my existence in that in that realm in that state uh so it's not like you black out and you come back and then you go, oh, all these things happen. Or it's actually a, a conscious experience. Of course, because your body, you know, your body will turn on right up to the point before you go unconscious because your body wants you to be conscious, that that higher operating system. Or what's the point, right? It wants mm. you to experience it in a way that you can come back and talk about it, but you can also remember it. So when you have the experience and you remember it, just like you remember maybe a vacation you went on and what it felt like, and you have these memories, well, the same thing will happen with this. And so when you want to go back to it, you know how to get back to it. And then it starts to strengthen your operating system to where it can take you to higher and higher frequencies of it. So the times that you have experienced this, and I still want to find out how, but before we get there, the times that you have experienced it, what did you experience? What did it feel like? It feels pure. It feels very clear. And your consciousness, of course, is very clean. And you feel strong. You feel uh, like you can do anything. I, I loved, I know this is kind of bizarre. I'm actually teaching a whole entire class on it right now on how to work out in the quantum body and how to actually release that frequency of 963 through the pineal gland while you're doing it so that it strengthens the quantum body. And, uh, and people are reporting, I'm so much, I can't believe how much more I can do. I can do so much more. Like I'm so much stronger. I, I don't even feel like I'm doing anything. Everything that feels hard in the physical body is easy in the quantum body. Again, sign me up. That sounds perfect because <laughs> I can't stand working out, but maybe this fan will get me to do it. Um, so it, it, are we talking about when, when meditators uh, go into that, they drop in and they just exist? Is that what we're talking about? Is that the same thing or is that? is a different experience. It would be similar except for your body. So a lot of times when we meditate and there's a lot of uh, different religions or different practices where you go to higher states of consciousness and a lot of them, you're leaving the body. This one, you're not. You're actually uploading your consciousness into a higher operating system of the body. So you're not going anywhere. And then once you're able to do that, you can access information. You can access uh, different uh, things that maybe you didn't think you know because the operating system knows everything. It's all the information is there. And it's just the practice of learning to get out of the mind or even the imagination. And that's one of the practices we can do. So we'll, we'll kind of activate the quantum body and then I can give a little practice of knowing, am I imagining this or am I experiencing it? Because that difference right there is everything. Perfect. That, 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 because that is, you know, one of the biggest questions when I talk to someone is how you know, how do you know for sure? How do you know you're not just making it up or not making it up, but rather being using your creative mind to make an existence or an experience for you that is perfectly valid, but it's not the same as actual physically experiencing it. And if you understand what I'm saying, right. I know exactly what you're saying. And I okay. think it's really one of the most important conscious awarenesses that we can have is knowing what level of consciousness that we're in. And when we're 
in a level of consciousness that's connected to our programming, yes, we can imagine. And that at least gets us a little bit outside of our programming because we're tapping into more of that creative energy. But we really want to move even beyond that. We want to get to a place where allowing information to come in or an experience to come in. So I have a really simple exercise to just show the difference between the two. And then we can um, turn on the quantum body. But we'll do the exercise first and see if you have any questions about it. And then we can go in and turn it on if that sounds good. I like simple. Let's do it. All right. So let's just start. Let's just shut your eyes. And you're just going to kind of drop in and just kind of center yourself. And now I want you to imagine a sunflower. Just imagine a sunflower. See what comes up. If you see it in the field or if it's just the flower. And just notice what your body feels like when you're imagining a sunflower. Okay, now open your eyes. Shake it out. Okay. Now, I'm going to have you shut your eyes again. And you're going to ask that the divine intelligence, source intelligence, whatever you want to call it, show you a sunflower. Just allowing an intelligence to show you a sunflower. And it may not look like a sunflower. Just noticing what, how your body might feel different. And then you can open your <laughs> You're like, oh, um, I don't know what to say. So a point was, is one that you were making it happen and the other one you were allowing and having the experience. And, mm. you know, for some people, that'll even be a practice is going from trying to allowing because that is also a muscle and a practice. Absolutely. Uh, and I think as I'm thinking here, I mean, something, there was a difference and I don't want to say what it is just yet. I want to ask you that in a second, but. There is something to be said about we've got I've got a microphone in front of me. I got headsets on. I'm I'm talking to thousands of people who are watching this right now or listening to this right now. So uh, part of my mind is not allowing that complete disconnection, right? So it's a bit more difficult. But I I tried and there was a difference between one and the other. I do think I've got to work on it. It's going to be a practice for me to be able to let it go for sure. And, and that's something I'll, I'll, I'm I'm going to see if I can do. Next time I meditate tomorrow morning, but, um, can you, if someone went along with us and did this with us before I mentioned what happened with me or what I saw, what can, what, what makes them know that they had a successful experience and I'm, I'm not going to change my answer. I'll tell you what it is exactly, but I'm curious for, for someone who's listening right now. The way your body feels. So one will feel um, a little more tense. It'll feel more forced. It will feel tighter. And then when you go into allowing for the intelligence to come in, it immediately, your body opens up and moves into more of that heart space, that peaceful space. And it doesn't matter so much what comes because your, your, your consciousness immediately moves into the experience of your body. And the more you practice it, the more that will happen. And, and a lot of times people won't see anything and they just get a, a knowing or they get a sense of what that would be because they're tapping in more into an intelligence of what it is versus trying to make it happen in the mind. Gotcha. All right. So now I'm going to tell you what happened to me. Okay. And it, it's weird. So uh, <laughs> um, when, when I uh, forced the sunflower... I was looking at a sunflower with a stalk. I was in a field full of sunflowers and bees everywhere, like they usually are. And, um, and I, I felt, oh, how lovely. Right? Mm -hmm. When I allowed, pardon me, when I allowed, um, it was a lot more close up. It was actually the, the, the strands inside the head of the sunflower. And what happened was that I actually 
hmm, this is weird. I felt like melted into the sunflower. It's weird, right? So uh, don't judge me. <laughs> I know how weird it sounds. <laughs> but, so I don't know whether that was my mind saying um, that's what I'm supposed to feel or do. That's why I asked you first before I, I revealed what, I, 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 uh, what happened. So I guess I was somewhat successful <laughs> based on what you're saying, right? It sounds very successful. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know what I was picking up on as you're speaking that too is is that release of the DMT immediately happened was it was able to shift your perspective and put your consciousness into more of that abstract space where we'd have experiences of oneness Mm. or however. And that's kind of what I was picking up on when you were sharing that. So I would say you were very successful. (laughs) Well, that's that's cool. It's it's interesting because even though I allowed myself to go with it, for lack of a better term, to a certain extent, it was still... Uh, it just felt like it was still me, my consciousness, but it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, what you said would happen, which was I would join intelligence. I was still conscious. It was still will, but will was melting into a flower. I don't know if that makes sense. I, I feel like you're having the right experience. And the more yeah. that you do it, the more the gap between your consciousness and the intelligence will get right. Because if you can imagine your first time, there might still be a gap where you have that awareness. Kind of like if you're hypnotized, right? You still have that part of you that's aware of, oh, I know exactly what's happening. I know what I'm saying. And oh, and, and then you wake up and you get out of it and you don't remember anything. Well, <laughs> in some ways, that is a similar experience. So the part of you that knows you are the intelligence will have the experience, but then there's going to be the part of you that's also observing the experience. And eventually Mm. that gets smaller and smaller to where uh, observation and the experience of it gets small enough that it's not, there's not a very big gap, but you'll always have a little bit of consciousness until you learn to fully surrender into it. Mm. Okay. So yeah, I definitely do have some, some work ahead of me because like I said, I, I, I think if I had, if I had allowed myself to relax completely and really dropped in, it might've been a different story. Uh, I think I was too conscious of observing, right? Which is exactly what I shouldn't be doing. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that tomorrow morning and, and I'll let you know how it goes. I love to hear. All right. So is that was pretty simple. Is that all it takes? That's all it takes to raise our frequency and, uh, and become bioquantum? Well, and now it, it, the next step would be to do that with your body, right? So... We can do a simple little activation of the quantum body and then just recognizing as you're going through this little process that I do, and I'm going to make it super easy, uh, just noticing, am I imagining or am I allowing? And the more that you, and when you start to maybe go into wanting to name what it is, let it go and just let it and keep surrendering into just having the experience and and that is the hardest part, right? Because anytime we do an activation, our mind's like, oh, I'm seeing this and this is happening. Oh my gosh, my body says this, this. Right. It's- because I have to keep, I have to remember it saying, because, you know, <laughs> I have to, I have to tell everyone who's listening what happened. So I will try, <laughs> but no guarantees. Okay. Well, you, you be you and then just allow it. And then, you know, like I said, it's the first of many. So we'll just make it simple. So if you want to shut your eyes again. And we're going to use the breath a little bit here. So I'm going to have you just breathe in through your nose and you're going to see a white blue light as it moves through your nose. It's going to trace along your brain and moving down through your spine. And then it's going to create this wave and just feeling as you breathe out a wave moving up your spine and then having the light enter into your pineal gland and just expanding. And then you're just going to breathe in another. Breathing in that white blue light, allowing it to move down through your spine and then creating that wave. And then you can just, as you're breathing out, just feeling it expand into your heart space as the light enters your bloodstream, raising the frequency of your blood to that 963, your source intelligence. 
And then on this last breath, we're just going to breathe in that white blue light, allowing it to move down through the spine, feeling that wave as it moves up, your spinal column. And as it enters the pineal gland, it's going to move right into the master cell. It's the cell that's connected to every cell of your body. That white blue light is going to activate the frequency of source, turning on those other 10 strands of DNA, just releasing the frequency of source, leaving the cells of your body from observation to the expression of the intelligence of source and just feeling that frequency as it connects to every electron, raising the frequency of your biophotons, creating a system, a technology that's running these frequencies Feeling all of the electrons clicking together. Feeling the water of your body moving into a higher spin state as it structures. Supporting this divine technology. Just feeling your physical body raising in frequency. And you may have the sensation of electricity in your body. And as this divine operating system is turned on, just noticing where your consciousness is and just with the awareness of where your consciousness is, just allowing yourself to almost move it right into the divine operating system, this divine technology. You are the most advanced technology there is. And just having the experience of what it is to attune, to match the frequency that's been released from your DNA. Allowing you to move beyond the physical form into that multidimensional experience of your body. And just noticing how your breath may change. And just knowing that from this system, that anything you need to know is right there. You can Google it just like a computer. You can Google your own operating system. And then you get to have the experience what that is. So just taking in another deep breath. And then as you... Blow out, just allow yourself to open your eyes for the first time and just noticing what feels different from that frequency. Simple, simple. Of course, we have lots of other different ways that are way more complex than that, but that is the beginning stage. It's just... And that and that is going to take some practice. I am looking forward to playing this over and over again and doing it because I was super conscious for a certain time. It wasn't until the very end that I started like actually feeling things and um, felt very like I started getting really hot and I got uh, very tingly. My whole body was tingly and things like that. And when I opened up my eyes, it felt like I wasn't here. I was looking, but I was looking out. I was it was, know, it was so weird. Anyway, I'll, I'll have, to, I have to practice it more. So. Uh, so very, very cool. It is a very simple exercise. Um, I think Joe Dispenza used something similar uh, with your the energy in your spine going up and down, things like that. But um, uh, th- this is, th- see, when I do things like this, it's, it's difficult to continue the conversation because I, I'm like, now I'm just spacey. Like, I just want to go, yeah. I want to go frolic <laughs> in the sunflower field. <laughs> uh, all right, so... Then, if this is the, if this is the the modus, the way that we raise our frequencies, and that it basically just by willing it so, right? For lack of a better word, it's just willing it so. Um, where does scalar waves fit into all of this stuff? 
Right. So the quantum technology that we use in all of our products and is also taught in the school as well. It actually has foundational pieces that teaches how to hold consciousness in the frequency that is released so that you can obviously move out of the operating system into these higher states. And with that, we use scalar scalar waves. So we basically put the scalar waves as the, the quantum technology is the delivery system. And I'm trying to see if I have what it looks like. So here's what look- it looks like. This is the technology itself. So each of the the symbols is doing something. And then oh. it's being tra- the, it's connected to a scalar machine that's transmitting um, the frequency of source, or 963. Okay, so let's back up for a second. For those... Un- Uninitiated, can you explain what a scalar wave is? Yeah. So I, you know, I'm not a scientist, but the way I like to describe it that just makes it super easy to understand what the difference is, is between a Hertz wave and a scalar wave. So a Hertz wave diminishes over time and space. And we all have that experience. If we're in a room and somebody strums a guitar, you can hear hear it, you can feel it. And then after a few minutes, it's not there anymore. And unless you strum it again, you won't hear it or feel it well with a scalar wave it doesn't diminish over time and space so it's the ability to harness energy and and connect a a specific even program it to hold a a certain frequency and then it will not diminish over time and space it will stay the same right interesting thing about scalar waves the cia actually put out a paper on it so because they were i mean obviously there's a lot of stuff the cia has been has been uh studying over time and a lot of people don't realize if you go to the cia.gov there's a lot of the the, i think there's a reading room that you can go into all those documents they released a lot of stuff people are uh are are did not didn't know scalar waves was one of the things they looked at and uh what they found uh is um obviously it's it's uh they're believed to have zero frequency meaning they don't oscillate in traditional sense so It allows them to technically transcend the constraints of space time. It doesn't actually travel as much as it stays put. It's, it's, it's energy in between the space, which is kind of a weird thing to think about when you get down to it. So when you say scalar machine, is there like a machine, like a nuts and bolts kind of thing in your back room somewhere that that symbol is connected to that's just hashing out these scalar ways or what did, what do you mean by that exactly? Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's not nuts and bolts. It's more, it, it's a, we use a lot of radionics and convert through um, to like pyramids and magnetics and that sort of thing. And, uh, and yeah, but yeah, there is an actual thing that's uh, releasing the frequency that's moving right through the technology and is connecting to it. I have to say what you were just saying, though, I'm so fascinated by. And uh, the reason why is that we have the ability to become scalar. And when you were saying it's kind of outside of time and space, that's really where we're going as we evolve as humans. And that's just so exciting. I'm just all lit up right now. (laughs) Well, it's interesting because somebody I talked to a while back actually uh, explained to me the scalar, that his thought process was that scalar energy is actually what we are made of, that we are scalar energy. And so it's, it's tapping into that intelligence that you're talking about, right? That's it. That's it. That's was his, his thought process, not mine. I'm just messaging it out. Right. <laughs> but as, but as I researched before our conversation today, I stumbled on all, the, all that information again and, and it's, it struck me. So, so then you've got these pyramids and radiology and all that kind of stuff that you're working with that the scalar machine, how is it connected to those symbols? It's just a symbol on a card, right? It, it actually, it's the sacred geometry. So the sacred geometry sure. is also holding the, sca- the same scalar frequency. So all we're doing is really boosting. So the machine itself has the, the home frequency or the, the technology on it as well. And it's, it's a way of transferring the frequency. So just like you would uh, like a bakla or remedy or something that you're converting a frequency from one thing to the other. It's no different than that. I think they even have 
some radionic devices where you can put a uh, like your pills and then you can put it, the frequency of it in the waters and it's just shifting the frequency from the pills to the water. It's very similar to that, mm -hmm. but we're just doing it into our products and Ormus and that sort of thing. Uh, Ormus? Yeah. You, you lost me there. <laughs> okay. This, you're going to love this. Okay. We don't know what Ormus is. Okay. So Ormus me, it stands for orbited, rearranged, unidentified substance, or another word for it is ORME, in it's orbited, rearranged, um, monoatomic element. So it's an element that had, that you can use in alchemy to convert a copper element into a, a into a monoatomic element that is also in a spin state. So they call it a multidimensional element and there's a lot of studies out there that are, of course, showing what it's doing. It's a really hard element to, to study. And I think you can see why, because if it's always spinning in and out of this dimension, it can be harder to study, but they can study what it's doing. And some of the things that it's doing is activating the pineal gland, at, um, ex extend extending telomere length, and partially reversing aging. They used to call it the food of the gods, and the Egyptians used to make it in the pyramids and for eternal life. Didn't really work out for him, though. Clear, well, for a Disney <laughs> yeah. set, really. I mean, just because they're not here in physical, I feel like there's something there to just like the Mayans is they mastered the body. That is a fair point. That is a fair point. We started talking about the fact that consciousness is not who we are. So perhaps they live on outside of consciousness, which brings us full circle. That makes perfect sense. In a way, I had heard of Ormus, but I hadn't heard it referred to as Ormus. So now I understand. Now I put them together. So, Perfect. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, okay. So you now have these products that allow you, or so let's say that sacred geometry card that you showed us just a minute ago. We kind of just stare at it. Do we put it up against our bodies? Do we sleep with it under our pillows? Like, how? Wow. Does that work? Yes. Yeah, so we have a lot of different ways that you can play with it. Uh, it's on all of our, our products. So the products are holding this, the frequency. So in part of it, we have a skincare line. So you're actually putting those frequencies and shifting the way that your skin is going from observation to expression. So it starts to diminish aging in a way that is a little bit different than uh, I think any other skincare, at least that I know of. And uh, it's 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 amazing. It works. <laughs> right. So wait, 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 wait. You, you are saying <laughs> you are saying. Let me make sure I understand this. You're saying that you have a skincare product that has scalar energy infused into it that helps you to raise your vibrational frequency that will also help you to stay young yeah uh did i mention signing up before because if i didn't say it before <laughs> so so basically just it, it, i mean i should ask is this for both men and women or is it just strictly for women Yes, I was very conscious about making it neutral, uh, so it can go either way. Even the packaging is is uh, can go either way, and uh, and that's really what it's about. Like this is it is it, the skincare is the delivery system, and hmm. it's a really fun way of bringing those frequencies into the body. And uh, you know, we have other ways too. We we have the essential oils. We have um, hmm. The Ormus, of course, we have a couple of different kinds of Ormus or monotomic gold, if maybe that's the word that you've heard. And uh, and then we have something that we call it the DMT codes, which are 12 specific codes that work with those 12 strands of DNA that we do a lot of fun things around as well. So there's just so much. It's, it's it, if people, I, I'm one of those people is when I get tapped in, I just go. And when I get a hit to do something, I do it. So we have so many different ways of playing which is a lot of fun and i do like to say that it's playing even though 
it can it's a practice of course mm. if we if we choose to make it the practice but i do it in ways that you can kind of see what lights you up and go in that direction and takes you down the rabbit hole <laughs> so then the again the pragmatic putting my pragmatic hat on uh how do you know that i mean i'm, I'm sure you must have done lots of testings and all kinds of people have tried it and said that it's wonderful. Share some of those with us. Okay. Well, so do you want like testimonials? Is that what you're looking for? So I'm one of the things that we do to test is I have a, a neural check from BrainTap. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's a, it's a thing that measures your brain waves. It'll measure your heart, it, basically a full body measurement. So what we like to do is do a before and then have them uh, either do an essential oil or do the DMT card or they can put on the skincare and then we'll do another one right after. And it's incredible the difference between the two, especially with the mind and the energy field. It'll show kind of how much life force energy your body is holding. And we've had people go from 35 to 98 in three minutes. It's fast. Okay. So that's one That thing. is ex exactly what I was looking for. That right there. That's exactly that's <laughs> a scientific way of proving it. So in a way, you can measure this, even though it is an unmeasurable, you did find a way to measure it. So that's that makes people like me kind of excited about it. Okay. I'm going to you one that's even more exciting than that, though. Okay. Okay. So I, I don't know if you've heard of a company called True Diagnostic. They take your blood and they measure your telomere length. So I decided I was going to do it. So I did it. And this was, I actually did this as a test for our supplement. We have a, a supplement that's called the particle accelerator that's raising the frequency of your cells. Is working on NAD and those kind of fun things. So it's working with the technology on a cellular level. And I, 10 months later, the first one I took it, it my telomere length was 37 years old. I took it again 10 months later, and my telomere length was 19 years old. Wow, that is quite a difference. That's a big difference. And that was in 10 months? In 10 months. Okay. All right. Um, if someone wanted to theoretically get in touch with you or purchase some of these products, what's the best way for someone to do that? Go to becomingbioquantum.com. Okay. Just start playing. There's so, and you know, I really do like people to have an experience and, and that's why I love doing these kind of podcasts is get informed, make an informed decision, learn. And if it's, a, if it's that yes, that's not an emotional response. Yes. Because I, I teach not to make decisions <laughs> based on emotion, but more from that knowing and that feeling. And if it feels like, oh, okay, so this is something that feels right for me, then you have lots of different ways of playing there. But otherwise, you could also go to our YouTube channel and podcast and just learn learn more, experience more. And, and when you are ready to make an informed decision, we really invite you to do that. That's right. Yeah. You've got, I forgot to mention, you have a podcast, which is uh, very cool. Uh, you I mean, I've, I've searched your site quite a bit. I've, I did a lot of research into it. A lot of the questions I played dumb, but I knew the answers to because I had actually looked into the stuff, but that's part of it, right? Um, it's, you have a lot of great stuff on that, on that website. So, uh, if you missed the, the web address, don't worry. All you need to do is go to skepticmetaphysician.com. We'll have on her episode page, we'll have a direct link laid in there. All you need to do is hit that link and it'll get you connected to Jules right away. Um, I can't believe we've been talking already for an hour. Uh, this time has flown by. I'm so thrilled to have met you and to have had you come on the show. I'm excited about this stuff and I'm definitely going to do a little bit deeper dive down that rabbit hole. Uh, can't promise to get the skincare, but I'm thinking about it. <laughs> so I'll let you know how it goes. Jules, thank you so much for coming on and sharing uh, this wonderful um, thought process, because really that's what it is. It's changing your mind, changing your, the way you think to, to become uh, much more than you actually are. So thank you for coming on and doing that for us. 
thank you for holding this space for such an amazing connection. And a huge thank you to you. We know that there are tons of options out there and having you decide to come along on our journey of discovery with us is an absolute honor for us. We hope you've enjoyed this conversation as much as we have. If you did and you feel called to give back, we invite you to visit our website at skepticmetaphysician.com where you can donate to the show or subscribe as a member through our Buy Me a Coffee campaign. Your support will go a long way towards allowing Karen and I to bring you these wonderful conversations and teachings in more and more robust ways. Well, that's all for now. We will see you on the next episode of The Skeptic Metaphysician. Until then, take care. Take care.